This is a Lilo Virtual Flame Candle. And I have to say, the reason I bought this one is because um, there's a spate of these type of flickering candles in the market. And it's almost as if they've rushed them out as fast as possible and not really thought the electronics through. And this is absolutely no, no different in that respect. This unit, rather annoyingly, um, contains a fan to blow the flame about. And as you can see right at the moment, nothing is happening. The fan is running. The flame has stalled. And if you give it a ping, then it starts and it goes for a while. And then it invariably stalls. It rotates to the side and stalls. And I'm guessing that's because when you've got a fan um, blowing air past something like that, the fan ha tends to have a circular vortex of air coming out it. And it may be that um, that sort of twisting the, the flame against the sort of um, the support and it's kind of getting stuck in that situation by friction. But um, it does try to agitate the flame a bit. It's kind of a really annoying cyclic motion. Um, but it tries to agitate a bit by stepping the fan up and down. But this is the noisiest in terms of the whining noise it makes can electronic candle of this style I've come across. The other ones all seem to use magnetic uh, pulsers. So let's um, take it to bits, shall we? So I shall turn this off and we'll take the base off it. It takes four batteries and because it's got a fan, it's got a little aroma pad in the bottom that you can put drops of oil in to give a fragrance. As it comes, it absolutely stinks of cheap chemical vanilla. So out comes that screw. Takes four batteries, it's sort of double stacked, which makes them quite awkward to get out, although it does come with little cords to pull them out. Let's take them out, in fact. Oh. Right, what do we have? That's better than the other one. Um, it's got a plastic housing inside that the module goes into. So what have we got here? We've got a circuit board with... A, oh, and another thing, it's got the yellow LED. That's annoying, particularly given that it's got six volts um, at its disposal. Although having said that, no, because um, the batteries are wired in series parallels. So it's only three volts and they've got basically just doubled the battery capacity by putting them in series parallel. That's a wee bit disappointing. I was going to hack this, but that's going to make it a little bit more difficult. So here's the flame mechanism on top. Different from the others. The other ones usually have an alignment wire with a wee dip in it. Um, this one is different. Um, oh, that bit comes off. Oh, a rather strange arrangement underneath with a bit of sticky tape at the back. Ooh, that looks very floppy. Oh, look at that. It's a little gimbal. I wonder if that was designed originally to give it the backwards and forwards motion. Um, but the way it's working at the moment, it just flops and stays in a fixed position. The only way you could fix that would be to put it upside down, I guess. Um, but then that wire would drop out. The wire is just clipped in. OK. So, um... Well, let's uh, unscrew this bit from here. I think this candle is, to be honest, it looks like someone's put a lot of effort into the design, but it's absolutely terrible. Wouldn't recommend it at all. It's apparently made by a company called Lilo. I don't know if that's the same company does the uh, inflatable beach products like the Lilo beds and this one's called the virtual flame candle so let's see this is oh right okay I'm just going to get busy with the snips here I shall take the switch off the switch is on its own little circuit board it's a three position switch because it's got the six hour timer that they come with where it goes on for six hours and off for 18 seems quite common these days it's uh, much simpler than having a light sensor 
It means that you can set it to come on every evening and then go off later on itself. Chop, chop. Okay, uh, the LED is mounted straight and circuit board pointing up, which is interesting enough. There's the wires going around now. How does this come out? Does it come out? Oh, right, okay. I think that's locked in by this region here. It's a the fan is um, not a, what I'd call a, it's just a be standard little low voltage motor with a fan blade in it. Let's, uh, do I have a flat blade knocking about somewhere? Let's try and dig through the toys here. There we go. I have to say my first temptation is to see if I can stick a magnet in that, a wee pulser, and convert it so that it turns into a magnetic pulsing coil. Because other than that, you know, it should be pretty all right. And that's strange. Look at the... I wonder why it's got this... Oh, I see why it's got that. That's a soft foam so that it doesn't clatter. And there's a hole in that, so I'm not really sure how that's... A I suppose it lets some air through, but... How odd. The, the, the vortex that comes off the fan, there's no... Well, there, at the back of it, there's um, really their supports. Um, technically speaking, it would need a flat baffle in front to kind of stop the rotary motion. Maybe they were looking for the rotary motion. The circuit board comes out now. Not that it's any great benefit. I'm guessing that will just pop off. Yes, it does pop off. Well, let's just take the thing to bits completely. Oh, I've just snapped that. I'm not going to get emotional about that at all. Quite a tight fit, they've put a bit of foam around it. So this leaves us the crucial bit here, which is the little flame and the gimbal, which is odd. What would happen if I pop that out? I might want to break it permanently here. It doesn't come out terribly well, does it? The wire is just clipped in. So what was I, what would happen if I turned that upside down just to see what it does? Oh, the the wire does have a little indentation in it. And the bit in the middle has a slightly sort of tapered effect in it, so that it does have the freedom to wobble side to side as well as uh, just um, backwards and forwards. It can go in all directions. Yeah, I could see me sticking a magnet in the bottom of this and see if I can make it work better. So what if I stick that through like that and then I clip that back in like that? This is where I'm going to break it. Okay, so that'd be the gimbal hang down below. And then I clip it back in like this. Into its little flimsy plastic pivots, which are just going to snap at some point. Oh, no, it didn't snap. It just made a noise like it was snapping. Just to taunt me. No, even like that, it doesn't work that well. Oh, of course, now the, the the little indentation of metal in the wire is just uh, kind of stopping it from going completely. Oh, well. Well, what can I say? It's probably a really good idea at the time. They probably thought it was going to be quieter, maybe. I'm not 100% sure. They probably thought it was going to flicker better, but to be honest, all the reviews I found online were not very good and that's ultimately why I bought it, just to see how just how bad it could be. Um, I think I'll hack this because it does have possibilities. It's a shame that battery holder's... Um oh, actually, you know what? Can I hack the... can I... Yes, there's a possibility. 
that this could be wired so it just is a normal battery holder. Yeah. And then um, it should have said, then it can make it six volts, and that means it can run a warm white LED. Yeah, so there's possibility there. But um, another interesting thing, the video for this um, on YouTube, they never stopped moving the camera. The camera was continually panning by it. And the reason for that is it's a really just a repetitive swirling effect. It, it doesn't really flutter about like the other effects that you can get uh, do. And also, in the promotional video, at one point, one of the candles is already stalled in the video. It's not flickering about at all. So that pretty much sums this up. It's, I'm afraid that, um, oh, just rip this off so I can stick here. The Lilo Virtual Flame candle isn't really worth the money. It's not very good at all, I'm afraid.